Uh, we we have actually a, have a caller. A caller, line. excellent. Yeah, let's excellent. do it. Mm -hmm. Let's take this call from San Diego. Okay, and who is it? Hi, Neil. Uh, this is uh, Jeff from San Diego. Uh, Jeff, hi. Welcome to Star Talk Radio, Cosmic Queries Edition. Mm -hmm. So what do you got? So my nine-year-old daughter and I want to know, now that Curiosity's been on Mars for over a year... Wait, that sounds like it's really his nine-year-old daughter who wants to know. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's trying to slide in on her, he, on her he genius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <That's> Jeff. <laughs> so, now that Curiosity's been on Mars for over a year, yeah. and they found that Mars had favorable conditions for microbial life billions of years ago, yeah. I threw in the microbial life part. Billions of years ago, do you think we'll find evidence of actual life first on Mars, or on one of the new Earth-like planets that they keep finding? Oh, yeah, great question. So yeah. if we find life on Mars, it's not going to be like a civilization who's beaming radio waves to us. Right, it won't be someone playing our Elvis record. <laughs> it's backwards. Backwards. Back to us. <laughs> yeah, because they don't get how it's meant to be heard. Yeah, so on Mars, it's the microbial life that we're eager to find. And to the biologist, I, I mean, I'm not a biologist, but I think I can speak for them when I say if they find any kind of life at all, whether or not we deem it intelligent, mm -hmm. it would be an amazing discovery, the greatest discovery in the history of biology, to yeah. find life that had formed independently of life on Earth, right, uh, on Mars or anywhere else. If, if there was water, it's sort of likely, right? Or no? Well, every water on Earth, every place there's liquid water on Earth, there is life, even the Dead Sea, yeah. where people just didn't have microscopes to see life smaller than the resolution limits of their eyeballs. And so they say, therefore it's dead. Yeah. No, you just don't know how to see yet. All right, so whereas these exoplanets, th these planets that might be in the Goldilocks zones mm -hmm. around other stars, if we find life on those, uh, we're not looking at it microbially. I mean, there are tricky ways we can invoke, uh, clever ways we can test to see if it has microbes. We'd be looking at what are called biomarkers. Mm -hmm. If the microbe emits methane, for example, yeah. methane is not stable on its own. It has to be churned out by some process, and life is something that can do it. You look for methane in its atmosphere, or oxygen. Would we be able to find methane on one of the Keplars? With, uh, with very uh, careful measurements, we are at the cusp of being able to look at the atmospheric chemistry of planets that are orbiting other stars. So uh, if we find, I, I think uh, we're, it's more likely to find it on Mars, or we'll find it sooner on Mars than on an exoplanet, okay. just because the technology isn't completely there. Because we're there, we're on Mars, we're literally digging things up, eating them, a robot <laughs> is eating them, trying to figure out if it was once alive. Yeah, we're there, and when you're looking at exoplanets, you've got to be really clever. You have to wait for the planet to pass in front of the host star, and look at the light from the host star as it passes through the atmosphere of the host planet, and if the oxygen is there, it takes away certain signatures of light from the host planet. From the you host describe star. this. I can't believe scientists have the patience to do any of this. <laughs> this, is, this is, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it's a great question. Uh, uh, tell your daughter. Thanks for getting you to call in for. for yeah. So tell her probably Mars. <laughs> yeah. Probably. It's worse than that. I lost the bet. She picked Mars. She picked Mars. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So thanks, Jeff, for calling in. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right.